Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, rideshare customer is very rude, raised his voice at one point, following their instructions adds 20 minutes to the trip. The second story, a whole lady called my number constantly looking for burgers, got a two hour wait, and her kids hungry the rest of the night. The third story, bosses told us to take a photo, so we took a photo in which they would not recognize us. Today's first story is Smarter Than Real-Time Updates I'm a rideshare driver for the company with the pink logo and the misspelled word. I navigate exclusively with the app with a light blue icon, referenced as GPS, that allows you to note accidents, traffic, police, etc which appear on the map for other users to see real-time. It has proven its usefulness many times, as it automatically reroutes me around time-consuming events. I had a customer located about 15 minutes out of town request a ride. I obliged, assuming they were headed into town for a busy Friday night. The route to the pickup location is a busy all-the-time four-lane highway with many red lights. A few miles from the pickup, I pass a small accident that has the right lane closed, so I mark it in the app. Traffic is flowing pretty well, and this only adds about two minutes to my travel time. I make it to the location, and the passenger Pax comes out with two suitcases, which I help him put in the back while he gets in the back seat. I get back into my seat and notice a slight hint of beer on his breath, before a really powerful stench of B.O. catches me off guard. Rough and burly gentleman. He has a thick Russian accent but speaks English well, other than the stereotypical omission of articles, but there's certainly no hindrance in communication. I indicate to the app that I've picked him up and find out we're headed to a shopping center only about halfway back towards town. He's headed to the bank that's famous for the stagecoach. I'm a little irritated I drove out here to pick him up for a relatively short ride, but not upset. About a quarter of the way towards the destination, we come to a small accident in the opposite direction of where we're headed. This is not the same accident I passed earlier and marked in the app. GPS is telling me to turn left onto a road just beyond the accident. There's a fire truck in the median blocking my ability to turn left, but I pull into the median anyway because I see a self-service car wash that appears to have an entry slash exit on the road I need. While I'm in the median, Pax, where are you going? CG, GPS has me turning left here. I think I can cut through the car wash to get around this wreck. Pax, we need to go straight. By the time he said that, I was already pulling into the car wash. Unfortunately, they have a row of large rocks separating the car wash from the parking lots of the neighboring businesses, so I turn around and head back onto the highway. I pull around the fire truck and into the median on the other side, where I can access the road to the left. Pax, what are you doing? CG, I can still take this road. Pax in a more stern voice. Bro, just go straight. I can see on GPS that there's heavy to stand still traffic up ahead, due to the volume of cars and the accident that I reported on my way out. He is unaware. The road I'm trying to take comes out adjacent to and has an entrance into the shopping center we need. I wouldn't even have to get back on the highway. Without acknowledging him, I pull back into highway traffic and head towards the destination, probably three to four miles ahead. About two miles down, traffic thickens up suddenly. I can hear the packs shuffling in the back seat, and he begins to let out a heavy, labored sigh every minute or so. I can sense him getting antsy. Traffic creeps along. We have to sit through two to three cycles at every red light we come to. About 10 minutes later, into a trip that should have taken 10 minutes total, we finally approach the intersection I need to turn at to enter the shopping center from a side road, so I merge into the turning lane. Pax, what are you doing? CG, what do you mean? Pax, I told you just go straight. CG, this is your destination on the left. Pax, borderline shouting this time. If you had gone straight like I said, we'd be there 10 minutes ago. Against my wishes, I put my signal on, and another driver graciously allows me out of the turn lane and we go through the intersection. We came to the next intersection, with an entrance into the destination located at the middle of the shopping center. Lo and behold, here's the wreck I marked earlier on my way out to pick him up. When I drove by the first time, there was just one police officer there. Now there's an ambulance, a fire truck, and two additional police. They have the entrance completely blocked, while they tend to those involved in the accident and begin the cleanup process. As a result, they have the turning lane blocked off. The Pax gets more flustered and lets out an audible son of a bee. I have no option but to proceed through the intersection and plan to make a U-turn somewhere up ahead. 
At this point, I'm almost enjoying this, while the Pax realizes he's an idiot and resorts to silent frustration. I drive about a half mile before being able to make a U-turn. I head back toward the shopping center, drive around the wreck blocking the main entrance, and eventually make it to the side entrance. We pull up to the curb in front of the bank, and I hop out to retrieve his suitcases from the back. I set them on the ground in front of him and offer a have a good one as I hastily climb back into my car. I quickly end the ride in the app, pull off and stop in the other end of the parking lot to give him a one star. Anything below three prevents me from matching with him in the future, and I had a small complaint about his cleanliness, lack of, and more significantly how rude he was. I catch a glimpse of the clock visible just next to the edge of my phone, the way I have it mounted on the dash. If I had followed the GPS down the side road to the left where I tried to turn next to the fire truck, the trip would have been just as fast as if there had been no traffic on the highway. Since he insisted I follow his directions, the trip took about 20 minutes longer, costing him about $2.25 more than it should have. Here's the best part, the bank is now closed, as it's about 5 minutes past the half hour. Had I been allowed to follow the GPS, we would have arrived 15 minutes before closing time. Now he's forfeited the opportunity to do whatever he needed to do at the bank, and he has to wait for another driver to make it out to him to take him home, or wait for a friend to come get him. That realization provided quite the laugh for me, immediately eliminating my frustration with the trip. The next story is… Wanna order a burger from my house? Sure thing, lady. So this happened when I was around 13 to 14 years old, back in the early 2000s. So at the time we just had our landline phone system recently installed. Back then we couldn't just choose a number to have, you had to accept the one that the phone company assigned to you. We have 8 digit numbers, and back then the first 4 were used as an identification of where in the city you were. So many people had similar numbers. Example, ours were 3933XPXZ, our neighbor was 3933XXPZ, and of course always led to some confusions. Our phone happened to be one digit away of the one of a nearby burger joint, so we had our fair share of wrong calls. They weren't frequent, so we didn't bother much and have 10 second talks like, Person, is that from name of the place? Me, nope, sorry, you called wrong. The correct number is blank. Person, oh sorry, thanks. So among those callers was AL. AL equals a-hole lady. Now AL started calling regularly on the weekends at night. As soon as I picked up the phone, she always started to shout her order and would get mad when we said to her that she called the wrong number. For some reason, AL couldn't hold the information she was calling the wrong place, because no matter what we said, she would always call in the next weekend doing it all again. We of course started to think it was some kind of prank, because how can someone still keep calling after being told several times? This went by for a month or so, she wasn't calling the right place. So in order to know once and for all, I decided to wait her next call, and instead of telling she got the wrong place, I was just gonna roll along with it. Next weekend comes by, I see AL number on the caller ID and I pick up. Me, burger joint, good night, how I, AL, oh finally, I always try to call you guys and end up calling some a-hole person that never attends me right. Turns out it was for real, plus the SOB never tried to call the right number we gave her. She thought I was an employee trying to somehow skip work. I was pretty mad, but I held up the anger and continued. Me, we're sorry AL, I hope he didn't cause too much trouble. AL, I hope you fire them. That guy's just lazy and doesn't want to work right. Now can you take my order? Me, sure thing. AL goes along in describing a huge list of five types of burgers, along with sodas, fries, and other stuff. During this, I was just punching randomly on the keyboard of my computer, pretending I was writing up her order. We wrap up with some fake price I pulled out of nowhere, and she asks, AL, now how much time will it take for you guys to deliver? Me, 50 minutes. AL, what? I can't wait that long. My kids are hungry. Me, we're sorry lady, we're kinda busy today, so I'll throw some extra free fries for the inconvenience. AL, thank god, finally someone who knows how to satisfy a customer. I proceeded to end the call, and wait two hours later she calls again fuming. Me, burger joint go. AL, this is an absurd. I wanna know why my order still didn't arrive. Me, we're really sorry for this AL, I'll check to see what happened. AL, you better, my kids are hungry. It was 9.30 p.m. when she called, so now it was almost 12 a.m. Proceed to stall for 5 minutes, making it up some story of what happened. Me, I've checked and it seems our delivery guy apparently stole your order for himself, so you're gonna have to cancel it yours. AL, how can you let that happen? I demand a refund. She of course never paid nothing, no idea what her logic here. Me, I'm sorry lady, due to that we don't have more personnel to make the deliveries, so you're gonna have to cancel yours. AL, this is the ridiculous ID. 
I hang up and proceed to ignore her further calls the night. FF another four weeks apiece, and surprise surprise, here's AL number on the ID again, but this time a male voice on the line. With AL in the background, I listen to the following. Guy. So, I called that burger place. AL. Wait, you called, says name of the burger joint? Guy. Yes, it was on speed dial. AL. Hang up now. That's the worst place and... Guy hangs up the phone, and I never heard of AL again. The last story is... Oh, you want a photo roster of my staff to facilitate the tattling of tales? Okay. I spent my summers as a teen working as a lifeguard at the local lake slash water park. The job was pretty hard. We often had large groups rent out the pavilions and leave them absolutely trashed, not to mention the state in which they'd leave the bathrooms, which we also had to clean. Alcohol was permitted, so the later it got, the drunker they'd get, and the less attention they'd pay to, like, making sure their kids weren't actively drowning. We'd regularly have to rescue kids who bobbed out too far, or worse, had gone down the water slide into water over their heads, after assuring the guard at the top that they could swim. There were a fair share of adults we'd have to pluck out of the deep water too, who were just far too overconfident in their swimming abilities. But we made up for the gross cleaning jobs and the constant dampness from saves with a healthy dose of tomfoolery, and it was the best job I ever had. Cut to a few years ago, I still had summers off, but I'd moved with my partner to be more convenient for her job, so I got a job through a lifeguard company managing a local swimming pool, in an area that is to say hoitier and toitier. This pool ran like a dream, no booze, no deep water, no slides, and significantly less danger. I kept the staff on their toes with stories of what could happen, and we prevented any serious injury or accident from happening, with proactive rules enforcement. That wasn't enough for the members of this swim club, though. They constantly found nits to pick and my time as a manager was spent as a mostly a complaint department. Not only did they want to complain to me, but they wanted to complain to their property manager about our staff. The property manager was basically the person who made the decision to outsource the running of the pool to the lifeguard company. We'd had a few good ones who rarely got involved, but this one was a typical micromanager. She wanted us to hang a poster with pictures of all the staff and their names, so the resident busybodies could name names while they nitpicked. I said, okay, we'll put up a staff board with all our faces on it, but I should mention the lifeguard company took sun protection very seriously. We weren't allowed to guard without several layers of protection. Sunscreen, shirt, sunglasses, hat, umbrella, etc. Plus, we were supposed to be rescue ready with the lifeguard tube in hand and our whistle ready. So, that's how we posed for our pictures. If someone came to our impromptu headshot session out of uniform, uh-oh, can't have that, put on a shirt, here's my hat, oh, your sunglasses aren't polarized, best wear mine instead, pose with your whistle ready. Once the board was up, all the guards looked nearly identical. The lifeguard company owners, the people who had actually hired and paid us, loved it. They already thought we were the model of professionalism, and this sealed the deal on that image. The members were still stuck complaining to the property manager by saying, uh, one of the blonde girls yelled at my kid for breaking the rules. Can we get her fired? And the property manager would have to go through me anyway to find out who that was. Before my malicious compliance, if they could tell me what time they had a problem with something, I could just check the schedule and tell them exactly who was on duty, but never mind that now. I ended up leaving that job a few months later anyway, because I couldn't keep up with the fabricated drama and the extreme levels of pettiness the members and property manager would stoop to. I did love testing the pH of those pools though. Anytime it was too high, I'd mutter to the staff, must be too many basic bees here today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.